Welcome! This is 5-4 graphing square root functions and cube root functions. How can you graph transformations of the parent square root and cube root functions? So we've kind of already looked at these guys, but we're going to do a little bit more looking at the HK shifts. Now in class, I went through this, we reviewed from uh, Algebra 1, really, what the A shift in other functions with HK meant. And they agreed that if A was greater than 1, absolute value of A is greater than 1, then it's a stretch. If the absolute value of A is less than 1 or and greater than 0, then it's a shrink. Now we should have a plus or minus out front because a mi minus out front causes a reflection. Remember that. A plus will just leave it as regular, it won't reflect. Then we have X minus H, a negative H here which actually is a positive H, but when you plug it in, it looks like a minus H goes to the right. Uh, plus H is actually a negative H, it goes to the left. The K value, if it's a positive K, goes up, negative K goes down. Really, really studied those from Algebra 1. If you haven't been familiar with Algebra 1, I would suggest that you go into my um, into my other videos and look for Algebra 1 uh, transformations. That would help you to study those, take notes on them. Okay, changing the A value. Graph each ra radical function, then describe the graph as transformation of the graph of the parent function. The graph of the parent function is shown, so that's the parent. What we would do is plug these values in, they give us really nice ones. Square root of 0 is 0, times 3 is 0. Square root of 1 is 1, times 3 is 3. Square root of 4, remember how we're doing square roots from Algebra 1 is we break it down. 2 times 2 is 4. It's a square root, so it takes 2 to get 1 out, so we get 2 out of that. Times 3 is 6. Now you can go on with these numbers. And then you need to graph what this curve creates. Compared to your parent function, you'll be able to tell me whether that's a vertical stretch or shrink. Remember, a stretch We'll pull it off of the x-axis, farther than the parent function. A shrink causes it to lay closer to the x-axis. And then you'll have to figure out what factor it is being stretched or shrinked by. And I'll give you a hint, it has to do with this A. Okay, go to the next one. Now, we went ahead and we graphed this one, the cube root. Got a little bit confusing for students. So we plug in negative 8 into the cube root and we break it down it goes negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2 and because there's a 3 out there it takes 3 to get 1 out so it equals negative 2 half of negative 2 is negative 1 and then go ahead and plug in these other values and get the cube root of those and multiply it by half when you get them all, then you take those points and you plug them in 8 and 1, 1 and a half, 0, 0, negative 1 and a half, negative 1 half, and negative 8, negative 2, or negative 1. It will create this. Now, do you see how this new line is closer to the x axis than the parent? That means it's closer to the x axis, that means that it's a shrink a vertical shrink. So down here you would write vertical shrink or compression by a factor of 0.5. These are so much fun, I love them. Okay, now in part A, why does it make sense to use the values 0, 1, 4, 9, and 16? Part A was right up here. Why did it make sense to use these values? I call them nice numbers, but what do I mean by nice numbers for a square root? Okay, next thing. Explain how you know in part B that the graph g of x is a vertical shrink of the graph of the parent function. So you've got to talk about what I just explained. Go back and listen to the video if you didn't hear me explaining it. Generalize from your observations to complete the sentences below. When the absolute value of a is greater than 1, then it's a stretch. When the absolute value of a is less than 1 or greater than 0, it's a shrink or a compression. 
Make sure you have both words. Okay, graph each radical function, then describe the graph as a transformation of the graph the parent function. Give its domain and range. Okay, so here's the parent function. So we would plug negative 4 in here. Negative 4 plus 4 is 0. Square root of 0 is 0. Minus 3 would be minus 3. Negative 3 plus 4, that would be positive 1. Square root of 1 is 1. Minus 3 is negative 2. 0 plus 4 would be 4. Square root of 4 is 2. Minus 1, negative 1. 5 plus 4 would be 9. Square root of 9 is 3. 3 minus 3 is 0. And then 12 plus 4 is 16. Square root of 16 is 4. 4 minus 3 is 1. Now you need to take all of these points and plot it over here. Okay? This is your h value. h is a negative 4, so it actually moves it to the left 4, down 3, and that's how it should plot. The graph of g of x is a translation of the graph of the parent function, 4 units left and 3 units down. Now, when you have your point here, you're saying that the x graph stops right here can't go any lower. So when it stops, you say, well, that's the edge of my domain. So x has to be greater than whatever that value is. Now on the range, you go up and down and you say, where does the graph stop? Wherever it stops at, that's your y or your range. y has to be greater than that. Okay. This one works the same way. It is the parent function, or I mean that is the parent function for the cube, uh, cube root. And so you're going to have a graph that looks similar to that. You're just going to transform it by the h and the k. You're going to plug in values here to get that. So let me show you how the first one goes. Negative 6 minus 2 is negative 8. Cube root of negative 8 is negative 2. Plus 4 is 2. Okay, and then you'll need to fill in what the shift is, the domain, and the range. Now, are there any points at which this graph stops, going up or down, or left or right? If you don't see any, you won't see any on the transformation either, then you know that your domain and range are all real numbers. Okay, how can you determine the domain of square root x plus 4 minus 3 by looking at its function rule? So you already figured out the domain and the range here. Look at what they are and compare them to just the rule. And see if you can figure out how to determine the domain and range by the rule. Come see me if you can. In part b, what are the values of h and k in the cube root function? What effect do h and k have on the function's graph? So explain what happens with those h and k values in regards to this graph right here. Generalize from your observations to complete the sentences below. For g of x, square root x minus h plus k, and for g of x, x cubed, uh, x cube root, I'm sorry, cube root x minus h plus k. The graph of g of x is a translation of the parent graph h units left, if h is less than zero, h units right, if h is greater than 0. And we showed how it looks. When it's a positive h value, it looks negative. When it's a negative h value, we put the two negatives together and we get a positive, so it looks different. Then go ahead and fill in this on the k units. k is greater than 0, where it causes it to shift. When k is less than 0, how it shifts. Okay, on the very back page, write the equation of the square root or cube root function whose graph is shown. That would be a square root, because it doesn't make the complete s. So it's a square root. Identify the values of h and k. I can find that right here. 
this point, 1, 3, means that my h is 1 and my k is 3, because that shows me where my vertex is. Now you take the end point, 0, 0, from the parent root function, and it was translated to the right 1 and up 3. That's how we get h is 1, k is 3. Now we put that in the equation. So we have g of x, a, square root, x minus 1, plus 3. Put those in for h and k. The minus was in the um, formula, so you use a positive 1 on the graph comes in looking like a negative 1. Now we need to solve for this a. In order to do that, we have to find another point on the problem. This is x and this is y of that point. So now replace the x value with the 5, the y value, the g of x, with the 7. And now you solve for a. In doing that, we can simplify 5 minus 1 is square root 4. The square root of 4 is 2. And now to get the a alone, circle him, what's being added to him is a 3. So we subtract 3 on both sides. Then we get 4, and we have a times 2, so we divide by 2 on each side. We find that 2 equals a. So now we plug that back into this equation, and we have g of x equals 2, square root x minus 1, plus 3. Okay. Does the given graph represent a vertical stretch or vertical shrink of the graph of the parent function? Does this agree with the value a that you found? Explain. Okay, so we have to look at this. Is this a vertical stretch or a shrink? And we could plot in the parent function, and we can look closely at that as to whether or not it's stretching or shrinking. Then we should think of our a value, and we can even go back in our notes here and see if the a value out there is a number greater than 1, it does something. So I need to see in your words you explaining what it is there. The last one, how can you identify the point of which, to which 0, 0 from the graph of the parent function was translated in the graph of the square root function, in the graph of a cube root function? So they're saying, how can you tell that this is your h and your k? And also look on the cube root function and see how you can tell. You're welcome to come see me outside of class. If we don't have time in class to answer any questions that you still have, I really encourage you to highlight all over these notes as you're taking notes, anything that doesn't feel clear. Okay, this is the homework right here. And you're going to be doing the same thing. You're going to be graphing this and comparing it to the parent function. Then you explain the transformations and you explain the domain and the range of the graphed function. This one, the same thing, all of these. You're just graphing and explaining the transformations, the domain and range. And then on this, it says write the equation of the square root and cube root functions. That's like what we did right here in the notes. So if you don't understand that, go back here and watch how I do this again and try it on these. Okay? Um, very last thing, complete the chart by writing the domains and ranges for each function type in terms of h and k. Okay? There is, and I did include it in the notes in class, so people in class might have it for you. If, if you don't understand it, go back and look at some of these. I want you to look for patterns and relationships. The domain is affected by something here in the square root. And when your a value is less than, less than 0, in other words, when it's reflected, then it does something different to the domain and range. So this is the reflected. It's kind of hard to see because they, I just like to say it's got a negative out front. And it's got a negative A. This one is your uh, regular, where it's got a positive A. Okay, Just explain how H and K affect domain and range on each of those. And then on cube roots, let me know if there is an effect of the h and k on the domain and range for these. The last one, which function has a greater minimum value? This one or 
this one. Well, you're going to need to graph this one in order to know whether or not it's got a value that's below zero, because the minimum value on this one is uh, two zero. So you'll have to graph that one to see if it's below that. Good luck on this. I'll see you tomorrow in class. Thank you very much.